We've looked at the serenity prayer in this group before. Those of you who are new, don't worry. It's not a 12-step meeting. But we do use this around our yards and gardening. So what we do is we ask for the serenity in our garden to accept the things we can't change. And those often include things like 225 level air quality, 105 degree heat, squirrels everywhere, gopher holes everywhere, etc. And then we decide we'd like to change the things we can, like how we feel about those things, how we feel about our relationship with the animals who can seem like pests, with the plants that can seem like they die in August, with the difficulties that we have and the plants we lose. We can change our attitude toward that and move toward serenity. And finally, we know the difference. So we know we can't control nature, no matter how hard we try, but we can control our own attitudes about them. So tonight's goal is to be inspired and encouraged and encouraged by each other and our shared resources so that we can use the steps provided to select a group of native plants for our yards. So my goal is to inspire, encourage, and get you guys to do that for each other and then to give you some concrete steps. Now, right now, if you could, if you have a piece of paper, that's great. If you wanna do it in chat, that's fine. But I'd like you to select an area of any size in your yard where you'd like to see some California native plants growing. Hold this place in your mind during the meeting. Keep it in mind. Please write it down privately or share it in your chat box. Let's take about 30 seconds for that. I am trying to, I have lost my Zoom screen. So I can't see any chat. Anybody writing in chat? That's somebody's cat. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, but I have lost my Zoom screen. Does anybody know how to get it back? Now that I've shared my screen, I don't have my Zoom screen. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm going to stop the share and see if it comes back. There it is. Okay. Okay, looks like Nancy wants to work with the start of her driveway. And Becky would like to plant on the opposite side of her driveway, which will make sense to you guys, because tonight you're going to see the other side of her driveway. Um, anybody else want to share, um, even if you want to speak it, what area of your yard you might be thinking about? Okay, just have that in mind privately, though, because that's important. Um, okay, now is the time when I try to provide some inspiration for us all to share. And here we are, we have different priorities, all of us. Um, we share a lot, but we're, we're very different as well. I'm guessing that some of you might have the priority of water conservation, perhaps providing wildlife habitat, maybe making sure we're safe from fire is the most important thing to you, or maybe just getting some beauty and joy while you walk outside is your priority. No matter what your priority is, the action steps are the same. So a few things that we have going on that I'd like you to be able to see include this map I've made that you can access on our website. And it is, let's see, I need to reshare this, I think. Let me share this with you. And here it is. So I hope you guys can all see a map. 
give me a thumbs up or a nod or something. Got it. Thank you. Um, okay, this is a Google, oops. This is a Google map where I've entered everybody who has planted plants at their driveways for driveway impact. And it's interactive so that if you guys go to this on your phones, you can drive around and go from house to house. Um, here's a list of all the folks who've done it that I know of. And if you click on each one, it will tell you, for instance, this is the Fuller House. Here's the address. And they have some native plants and a sign up at the top of their driveway. And so does Marie Toitu um, up on John Muir. So you can use this on your phone um, or you can print it out and just follow the addresses. But at any rate, we hope to build it up, build it out. So that's feature number one I wanted to share. Um, I also want to invite Jeannie now to begin to talk about just for a couple of minutes about the equestrian center and i need to go back here sorry this is a little awkward um so Jeannie, the floor is yours and i'm just going to scroll through some pictures as you let people know what's going on around the equestrian center Okie dokie. Well, I uh, went back and looked at our records and our first day uh, of work was February 1st, where we had 18 people and we actually cleared the entire site or started to clear the site, uh, which included uh, three, uh, three tr uh, large uh, loads of uh, trash. Uh, we ended up working for a total of 14 scheduled work days. But I just want to add that a whole lot of people went there on their own and uh, that doesn't include the people who drug the logs that you see, the rock that you see, uh, did a lot of cleaning and digging and scraping and weeding. And so there's been a lot of work more than just the 14 total work days. Now through the summer, I just want to say that we've had uh, a number of ladies and some of their husbands who have helped water and I'm just utterly proud and delighted those people have faithfully gone out every week and, and watered and we really haven't lost too many plants because of the faithfulness of the waterers. Now uh, you'll see there that Patty is uh, working on the uh, dry bread Bed Creek. True Value donated all of that rock due to Leslie's uh, hard work in talking with them and following up on it. So True Value and Oakhurst donated all of the river rock you see at the site and Patty Gross uh, and her helpers are out actually building it and design well designed it and now are building it. So it's I don't know Patty you can say how long it's uh, where you're at in that process but it's amazing how it's looking so far. Uh, we've also had a donation to, to purchase two really nice looking concrete benches that will be placed there within the garden. And then you, if you've been by the garden, you'll see that uh, we've also had one bench that, as you see, has been refurbished and uh, it's already on site. Um, the large white post that you'll see right back there in the right hand corner in the next two to three weeks uh, is going to be painted and uh, uh, sturdied up, if you will, and uh, we'll be able to then hang from it a banner that's in the process of being designed and uh, created at this time. Uh, so tons of work. I can honestly say that we have been so graciously uh, appreciated by the community. Everybody who drives by honks, wave. We've had people literally stop and give us money donations towards buying plants. So and now we've got wonderful people who are protecting it and online saying stop littering and, and don't mess it up. Uh, finally, uh, I need you to mark your calendars for our garden grand opening. It will be October 17th at 4 p.m. And you will get a save the date card. You'll get more information, but we're planning on October 4, 17th at 4 p.m. to actually have a grand opening of this. And so kudos to everybody. Yay. Thanks, Jeannie. Awesome. And thank you for all of your amazing organizational panache taking care of getting all that done. 
Um, I like it when Kathy Kuhn says, nobody can say no to you. So <laughs> That's Maybe what I meant. I just put it another way. <laughs> okay. And furthermore, on the inspiration side, um, I realized as I was preparing for this meeting and I was thinking about all the stuff I wanted to share and talk about, well, I don't have to do it all today. So um, it's always nice for me to remember that. And so I, oops, I would like to show you this new window that I am about to show you. And it is this one. So this is the website and it is a calendar. So it's under this, it's our Native Plants Live Here events calendar. And we've scheduled um, Monday evening meetings at the same time through December. So you can see September, October, November, December. Um, and you can go to the website and firm up those dates if you'd like to. They are uh, September 21, October 19th, November 23rd, and December 14th. In addition to that, we will be scheduling classes during the day to help you guys through your execution of your fall planting. So, so look for notifications about that too. Okay, here's my face again. And there you all are. Hi, everybody. Um, okay, now's the super fun part I'm excited about. Um, we are going to have several people share. Now, this is not show off time. Those who are looking, don't be hoping these folks are showing off their gardens. They're not. They're educating us as to what they did, what worked, what didn't, lessons learned, or lessons in process of being learned. So, um, so take it away. Uh, and remember, minute and a half to two minutes max, each of you, please. And um, Preston, I'm just going to start with you, but I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. Okay, well, this is uh, the Corona Garden part of my property. It's actually on a separate lot from my property uh, that I own next door. And there used to be a giant uh, greenhouse or grow house there that had raised beds. When, I, when the coronavirus hit, um, this was all covered in rubble, brush, lumber, and stuff. And I've just never done anything with it the whole time I've been here because it is on a separate lot and it doesn't have uh, uh, irrigation. So um, anyway, when Corona hit, I thought, well, I'm going to clear out one bed and do something. And pretty soon I had the whole thing cleared. Well, not pretty soon. It's been about three months. And put in, uh, cleaned everything up, and put in some pebbles and stuff for walking, and started planting the beds. And it's going to be a native-only garden, except for the oleander, which I'm not going to kill. Um, and eventually I'm going to have a little name tags. Uh, it gets eight to 10 hours sun a day it is hot i mean that so i put up some shade structures and some of these were planted way too late uh, the one that's up there now that's the um uh that's actually one of the artemises and i can't remember which one um uh it looks like artemis in california it's, 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 it could be tried in time yeah, no, it's a big sagebrush big sagebrush i think they call yeah, it yeah great basin sagebrush the huge one um, and that is a winner. <laughs> I mean, you know, I put it in in the worst heat and it has just, you know, I even moved it once because I realized it's going to get too big and it's still just is thriving. Yay. Um, a lot of my other stuff. Okay, that's a picture of Lessingia. Um, uh, Lessingia. Village Anifolia. It's the, so, it's the master. silver carpet. Silver carpet. Uh, uh, and uh, I've always wanted. I did. I finally got it from Alex. I put four plants in for two months. They all did beautifully, and then one by one, they started to die. And yeah, I yeah, they've no never idea. worked for me. They've never worked for me, Preston. Yeah. Um, by the way, guys, this is that wonderful native that we all, many of us, have in our yard, Jimson weed, that makes those beautiful white flowers, and that grows just from the soil. And what happened with that is when I cleared all this up and started planting and stuff, a tons of that started coming up. The seeds must have been buried under the boards and stuff for years. 
and tons, and I just let it let it come up this year. That's a Zansa re, uh, uh, you California can use the common, Yeah, use the co common names. Okay, the California Fusion. Now, the reason I'm showing that is because I always hear all you guys saying this is rampant, it's like a weed, it's a da 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 da. That's mine. It's alive. It's been alive <laughs> for three months. That's all it's done. And I, there's another one right down the way from it that looks exactly the same. It is doing nothing, but it is alive. So I have hopes for next year. I'm looking for something invasive, and you guys keep telling me that you know it's easy for you. This is bladder pod, uh, right? The first one, and behind that is the uh, celestial blue sage. I just put in a standard Toyin. Now this is an interesting thing. Uh, I dug the hole for that for a bigger tree and I hit rock. And so I got this Toyin that fit and something has happened. I, I don't know what to do. I'm about to rush it you, Preston. Uh, okay, good. Okay, sorry about that. This is great. And, <laughs> And many of you know that pretty much every plant that he named, with the exception maybe of the aster, um, are, is on our YLP plant winners list. So you have access to it. Thank you so much, Preston. Awesome Corona Garden. And you guys, if you want to, you can go down to your thing and clap. You could go like down to the bottom if you liked it. <laughs> And, and hit the little okay. clapping hands. Yay, thank you, Darcy. Thank you, Becky. Yay, thank you, 767123. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Next up is Jeannie. Okay, well, here's what I have learned is that you must go to a class or watch the uh, instructions on our website on how to plant. These were planted before we had our class at Leslie's house. And I was thrilled because I thought I knew everything and I all I had to do is dig a hole. I didn't have to put fertilizer or any additives in it, put the plant in a gopher basket and plant it and water it. Not taking into consideration that I should have a well around it that will hold the water in so it'll actually go into the plant. And you can't tell here, but there is a slight slope to the left of the picture. And of course, I didn't accommodate for that either, you know. And so I'm sure that much of my watering, I've lost the two sages that I had. Uh, but the needle grass is making it. I've got three needle grasses, they're all doing fine. And then uh, and you can see there is a slope and you can see that I, I did a lot of watering, but I'm sure it all just went down and watered that telephone post. Uh, yeah. yeah, if uh, I may, Jeannie, I think you did a great job because your, your grasses are surviving and they're going to thrive next year. And I'm, yeah, and I'm counting on them being big. <laughs> yeah, and they will. I think your sages yeah. may have, may, it was a combination maybe of the watering, but also it's very shady there. And they really want hardcore sun. So it could have been that too. It's hard. That's why it's so important to plan now, you guys, where you can tell where it gets really hot in the summer. Um, yeah, and, you know that, and that was what, another thing I had to learn later. I planted it in shade. So at any rate, I just want to say one last thing. Preston, the deer, deer grass that you gave me, that little tiny, you know, bit you gave me one time, it's doing wonderfully well. Is that this guy? This guy? No? Oops, you're muted. Okay. Oh, no, it's over on the side of the house. Uh, and of course, oh. it's also on a slope, but for some reason, it's making it. Awesome. Yay. Thanks, Preston. So what, Thank what, you, Jeannie. Which grass is on the driveway? Which grass is on the driveway? Sorry, the dog barked and I didn't hear that. Which grass is, that is surviving on the driveway? Uh... Yeah, the one at the top, then the one all the way to the front, and then there's one right over to the right behind my native plant sign. This looks like a needle grass to me and a deer grass here, I think, maybe. But it's you only planted deer grass and needle grass, right? Jean? Right. Yes. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much. And love the sign on the pretty white post. We call this driveway impact. That's why she gets to be on the map. 
Okay, now we have Nancy and Will. I started with that one, you guys, I hope you don't mind, to honor the fact that you guys went to Santa Margarita to get plants for the Equestrian Center Garden. And that's you with Penny, the owner of that, of Las She's Bolitas so Nursery. Sweet. She's so sweet. Yeah, that's quite an experience going over there. February, the first week of February. Yep. So, so here is, why don't you guys talk about what you're doing? And this is right up the street. So we have <clears throat> what the celestial blue uh, sage, sage mm -hmm. there, uh, and they're doing well. We have the deer grass that has been eaten down by something, and what else? Well, yeah, that's uh, um, it's like a challenge uh, for a lot of our stuff around here because it's in we don't have quite the the, the soil that a lot of the rest of you have because we're sitting right here in a lot of DG, and um, it's really a struggle, you know, to, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, in some of these areas because they're, they're just not getting quite the nutrition, but we try to keep putting the water to them and they're hanging in there. Every week. The, uh, the Celestial Blue is looking good up here in the front. So. If, I, if I may, um, um, and you guys, um, Will and Nancy are East Coast, Northeast gardeners, so they're used to, you know, wanting to provide very new, very rich soil. Um, I don't believe that the problems with your deer grass have anything to do with nutrition in the soil. I think that they've just been eaten, and it's a slow year maybe for mm -hmm. them. That's all. They're alive, and I think they're going to do great. Um, so, okay. and you have three. I think you have three celestial blues and and four deer grass, something like that, huh? Right. 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 And this is this is down at the bottom, no? You no, no, ahead. this is in the back, and and that's uh, what's it called, Winifred Gilman uh, Sage. Sage, yeah. And it's doing well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, that is. yeah, it looks great. Yeah, but we had a disappointment with the uh, penstemon. Uh, those uh, two penstemon species there are within like six, seven feet of each other, planted the same way. One is doing well, never bloomed, but the other one died. Yeah, and, and uh, we don't know why. And there's yeah. baskets under and baskets, there. everything and baskets and, under and around them. Yeah. So we don't know what happened. Yeah, there's no telling. Really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah. I mean, sometimes things die. Um, I think the really good news is that you have a really healthy penstemon spectabilis, which is a showy penstemon that's going to be yeah. fantastic next spring. When? Well, it won't bloom till next spring. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's, well, that, one has, that one has a little uh, shade to it, whereas the one out that, that died is less shade, I think, so. It could, yeah, they, 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 they won't tolerate well full, full, hardcore sun. They're going to want some shade during the day. Hmm. Okay. And uh, what is that? Uh, Dana Point uh, Buckwheat. Yes, yeah. Patty brought I that. I loved that, Nancy. I love them. Yeah, yeah we have three. Great. Yeah, blooms. we yeah. love them. Oh, it looks like you've got two of them, one there and one there. Yes. And we have yeah. another one uh, back, you know, there's three. There's Beautiful. three down below the hill. Yeah. Beautiful and surrounded by, with a with deer grass. Uh-oh, we need to move faster, sorry. Okay. Okay. And that's some of the uh, deer grass that was eaten. eaten off a little bit, and that's the front from another view. Yay. Okay. okay. I decided to include your critters. Oh. <laughs> uh, Our rattlesnake. We're going to tell you more stories about yeah. them. But, uh, yeah, next but, time. Next yeah. time. All right. Okay. So Tom is going to share with us about materials. So let's all remember that we have this model in the Equestrian Center of materials and plants and how to care for the garden that we can use as a model for our own yards. So I asked him to talk a little bit about the kinds of materials that we're using. Oops, you need to unmute, darling. I'm Tom. Hi, Tom. Leslie. Oops, you're muted again. There you are. Here we go. Am I on? You're on. 
Hey, I'm Tom, Leslie's Tom. And uh, as if you guys know me, you know that I don't know hardly anything about plants. Um, but I'm married to Leslie, so that's awkward. And, um, but at our home, I learned to really enjoy doing the hardscaping. I learned the, the, the artistry of the, of the wood, of the logs, um, particularly the rocks too. And I was one of those first 18 that uh, helped crank that thing up. And I think I'm a testament to you not having to be an expert on any of this to be able to participate. Um, I went to uh, Becky's house and I got those rocks that made the path. You guys had already drawn the path, but um, I put those in there. And Patty and I, the last, well, not, not this last weekend, but the two weekends before, have been with, uh, under her direction and artistry, we've been building the creek bed. So I love um, different things that maybe you guys do about this. I really enjoy the fellowship of being there with you guys, watching this thing grow, watching you guys come together. And I really do enjoy the reaction of the neighbors when they come by and stop and honk, honk at us. And, um, you know, it's people that I probably would never would uh, get to know or get to talk to. And I think it's provided a real sense of a community for us. So, like I say, I don't know much about the plants, but I think that um, we all have something to offer to these kinds of projects, even if you don't, if you don't know everything about everything or anything about much of anything. So, um, and I really enjoy being around you guys and um, I appreciate being a part of this group. We love you, Tom, or at least I do. <laughs> um, okay, so here are two pictures of our house and how we use, this is a theme, you guys, to keep it simple. Mulch, logs, and rocks, just like the equestrian center. Mulch, logs, rocks, they are your friend. We have them all over our house and this is Tom. And you can begin to see the scope of what we've been able to do on our property with that little bit every year and this year we went all the way to the bottom of the property over here with mulch local mulch from the guys tearing down the pine trees and logs thanks tom thank you okay paula you're on you need to unmute that one is an accident I thought it, I was like, is that native? But I was like, I'm, I'm going to leave it. Okay, here we go. No. So, so this is um, the white sage. Um, it, it, um, it had grown a beautiful, two beautiful flower stems that the dog wiped out. <laughs> and so it's doing well. It's, Yay. Um, it, I, I keep waiting for it to get 10 feet big. It will. Just give it some time. <laughs> so that's that's it. And this is my um, Penstemon spec, spec. I was saying spectabulous. But that's it's, good. That's perfect. Okay. And um, and it is in a hundred percent sun. And I was marveling to hear you say that it really needs some afternoon shade. That's fantastic. So and you and can it looks so beautiful contrasting with these things little bit of um, fl flowers have happened up on the top. It's going to be, it's an amazing colors. This is the little poppy that decided to be a perennial. You can see I was going to pull them out and I re saw the green. Yes, many of so you, if you, have, if you yeah. have hardy poppy plants, don't pull them out. Just clip them to, clip them to the ground. They'll green back up some of them. Yeah. And this is a, um, a, a needle grass beautiful that uh, and you see along the base of the um, bamboo fence there are some ground cover um i believe it's cyanosis and i put in five uh two have completely disappeared one is still there having been eaten and those two green puffs that you can see are um the two that remain yeah I those are I chose them because they're a, it's a very steep slope and apparently they really grow and will stabilize slopes and they are great for bugs and birds and little critters. That's my um, blonde ambition. Spectacular. Like, uh, gamma grasses. Yep. 
And this is the beginning of a hummingbird sage project. And those that, so that whole grassy area was, um, was also complete gravel. And my husband took it upon himself kindly to sift out all the gravel. And now those are the five little starts I got from Leslie at that meeting at her house. Thank you, Paula, that's awesome. I'm concerned that Carolyn isn't here, so I'm gonna stop the share for a sec and check, oh, there she is. She's probably been there for a while. Let's see, there's Carolyn. Okay, I'm unmuted. Hi, darling. Okay, you need to hit your video, please. Oh, yeah, that's right. Da, 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 da. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, hey, guys, this is Carolyn. She's on our steering committee. She's one of the founders. Hi. Of <laughs> and um, and um, what was I going to say? I forgot. Okay, Carolyn, believe it or not, you're on unless you, you know what? Let's let someone go before you so that you can hear what's going on. Okay. And you'll go next, okay? Okay, so let's move to Miss Patty, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay, Patty. Is it up? Did it go up? Yes. Okay. Patty, you need to unmute yourself. Now okay. you can hear me? There you go. Okay, so we planted well over 100 plants um, for this season. And um, like William and Nancy's front yard, most of the plants went in the front yard, but we have very little soil depth, mostly solid granite boulders and, and a slope. So it, it's tricky. So, um, my main focus for this section right here, this, this is not mulch, bark mulch that you see for the ground cover. It's actually lava rock. And the reason why is um, I wanted really good fireproofing within the first five feet of my structure. So I was not gonna have any, anything wood. Um, so that hummingbird sage, it was really tricky because this, this part of the yard is in deep shade all winter long. And then you start getting some nice sunlight in spring, which is when I planted this hummingbird sage and it had that beautiful bloom on it. And this picture right now is what it looks like right now because this lava rock, you wanna keep in mind, if you use rock for mulch, it gets very hot in the summer. And so this, this sage is caged so that I could drape a shroud of landscape shade material over it for the whole summer. So yeah. I pulled it back for this picture. You can see it's got some brown spots and actually some kind of insect has been chewing on it a little bit. So my dilemma is, do I move it to another location when the weather gets cooler? Yes. But I will say that what I did learn about this space is because the springtime is optimal for growing anything in there that's short term. I threw poppy seed in there and lupine seed and the and this whole section was filled with flowers. Thank you so much, Patty. Um, and yes, hummingbird sage ought to go in an organic mulch. It it lives normally underneath oak trees in the leaf litter. Yeah, so, so it's it's not yeah. loving this lava rock on top of landscape. It's a great lesson, right? Great yeah. lesson. And hummingbird sage is easy to relocate, so you can do that. Oh, good. I'll do it when it's more comfortable. Okay. We are really running short of time for me to get to the planning part. Okay. So, Carolyn, I'm going to go with you, and I'm, I'm going to give you like 90 seconds, but the pictures are going to tell so much of the story, okay? Oh, yes. This was oh. November, believe it or not. <laughs> well, there's not much there. Uh, I can't remember how many plants I planted. Uh, I should have got my list out. 
Uh, I think but, you planted about 12 or 13. Yeah, I only lost one and it was one of the low growing, um, uh, I think maybe it was a hummingbird sage, but I'd like, now does the hummingbird sage um, work in the shade better then? Uh, I you know what, shade. Carolyn, I, why don't you keep, keep an eye on the, the pictures that I'm showing. And okay. kind of narrate for us. This must have been spring because I see California poppies. Yeah. It looks very, I didn't realize it had grown so much. And so uh, there's the spring and there's today. How about that? I have problems getting pictures. There's a lot of sage behind the uh, flag, but you can't see it. And so yeah, you guys, this has been very, very successful. Okay, so this is a success story. These yeah, are they're large, doing great. large sages. I think they're Ellen Chickering that have bloomed spectacularly for first yes. year. These grasses are doing great. This sage is doing well. Um, she's got it heavily mulched. She's got her sign. It looks awesome, Carolyn. It's been very it's, successful. It's on a slope. Uh, these things do, do well, They're, and I'm having problems with um, gophers undermining the cages. So at times I keep caving it in, but it's getting hard to uh, this hot weather. Uh, but they've done fine. I have I have no complaints at all. They've well, done really yeah. well. That's, I mean, that's just, you can't ask for more than that first year for a sage. You'll see right? Becky's have done very well, too. Uh-huh. That's my uh, deer grass. Yep, it's spectacular. One year. I mean, less than a year. One season. I think Thank it was you October. So I'm sorry. I think we planted that in October, didn't we? Uh, November, actually. Oh, you, was it? You yeah. might have been a little bit later. But even. you can see a little bit behind the flag. There's tall sages all back there, but the, the lighting was so bad to take pictures. I tried several and it, it just didn't, uh, uh, they're, they're too much as, uh, the same uh, shade as the background there. The, yeah, the we can see them. They look great, Carolyn. Yeah, they are. They're doing really well. Thank you so much. And so finally, we're going to Becky. Um, and... I left oh, Becky great. for last because she was touched by some kind of a fit of a native plant fairy. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna go fast, Becky, but <laughs> the pictures tell quite a story. So so let us know what you need to. Okay, well this is my can you hear me? Yes. Okay. This is the plants um, that I bought. This is pre pre-planting and there's my friend he wanted to help um <laughs> so i have virginie uh salvia virginie ponzo blues uh deer grass which were if you see the deer grass right here those are four inch pots um so that's i got six of them and i only got four inch pots but they just they just took off like crazy yeah so small, this is my empty space small is good i'm sorry small plants yeah are good. so this is my empty spot this is on my uh, um, south side of the driveway. And so here's my beginning of it. Um, if you want to go to that picture right there, not that one, the next one. Those are, um, that's, okay, there's my empty spot, all cleared out, ready to be planted. And then here's my, my uh, first attempt at planting. <laughs> and this is, I, uh, I uh, use gopher cages for underground and I put cages on all of my plants. Uh, this picture you're seeing right here are deer grass and electric blues that I planted um, probably in May. Yep. And they're alive. My electric blues are just, they're alive, but they're, these are guys are growing really, really slowly. So That's I'm okay. hoping they'll kick off and yeah. That's okay. So, um, they plant sleep year one, creep year two, year, year two, and leap year three. So. Oh, okay. Look at this, guys, this is what I wanted you to see. It's beautiful. This is planted in the spring, and it did this yeah. by now. She has been watering once a week, um, and she waters for 10 minutes each plant. So in case you're wondering whether it works to water infrequently and deeply, here's, here's the evidence. The proof is in the freaking pudding. <laughs> And if you look here, you see her sages and her deer grass. And here is a shot that I took actually of the whole 
driveway. And now, so she's oh. going to work on the other side. Okay, guys, thank you mm -hmm. so much for that. I'm sorry if I cut you short in your speaking. We're super late. Um, I just want to share with you, this is the hope part of the, of the class, of the meeting. This is a um, fuchsia flowered gooseberry, and this is what it's supposed to do. This time of year, it goes summer dormant. This is its time, and it's called in California, we call it the fifth season. It's when summer's even over in the California garden. Now it's time to hunker down. It's quiet, it's crispy, it's calm, and we accept and revel in the cycle of California plant life. And part of that cycle is this, and you will come to see it as beautiful if you do this for a few years. Part of the reason it's beautiful to me is these are my oak, my oak gooseberries. So wouldn't you think, wow, they died? So every year I'm afraid they died. So three days ago I went and I took the tip of one of them and I opened it and it's green. It's summer dormant. This is how it protects itself. It's California's fifth season. It's a time to reflect, to sit quietly in the garden, not to ask it to put on a spectacular show. It's resting time. Um, I can't spend time on this, but there are beautiful things about this cycle. In this book, I can send you, I can get these to you. And now it's time for us to talk about our own planning. Now, I'm keeping it simple. It's not time to do anything. It's just time to plan. It's the fifth season. We don't have to work. We can just think and draw and plan and drink coffee and look at things. So what we do is we choose a location. We measure the location. We study and select our plants. And we purchase our plants if possible. And I will share with you that where is this that right here um there is an availability list for alex at thicket and vine has been growing our plants the plants that work for us on here are all kinds of sages penstement spectabilis deer grass and um, Artemisia californica, which is a beautiful, beautiful, fine-leafed thing that just does so well here. Stick to those guys. Stick to those early on. Also, white sage, brandage sage. So here's the deal. You can read this on the website. Go to the website to the resources page and look at these things. He will deliver a minimum of five plants. If you buy 20 or more, he'll give you 20% off. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna order mine, I'm gonna pay for them, and he's gonna deliver them or I'll pick them up when the rains come. This is an incredible opportunity. I highly recommend you choose your plants from him and pay for them and he'll hold them. I know it's hard to think about doing that, but you know what we went through last year. Once October and November hit, these native plant nurseries are sold out from the fall organizational sales. So unless you wanna be ordering from Las Palitas or traveling to Oakland or traveling to LA, think hard about taking advantage of this. Okay, so choose your location, measure, select your plants, hopefully purchase your plants. So first, choose your location. There's Carolyn's. Here's Patty, one of Patty Gross's, the front of her yard before she worked on it. Here is um, uh, Becky's before she did anything. She just asked the guys digging a trench on her yard to line the rocks up. Here is Diana and Lee Binney's house. I've been working with them. This is the top of their property and they will be using these areas 
to mulch and plant natives. This is Kathy Coons, one area that she chose. She has a gravel front yard and she chose a few areas like this where she took um, rocks, mulched it and planted some plants. Um, well, we measure. Now these plants, Becky, love you to death, but if your sages are three feet apart, it's gonna be interesting. Um, because they're gonna get seven feet wide in a couple more years. Wow. So um, that's why I urge you guys, we use sages up here a lot. Five by seven, five by seven, meaning five feet high and seven feet wide. So when you are, you don't have to make drawings, but if you've got an area that's 30 feet wide and 15, 15 feet deep, Here's a sage that's seven feet. So this is 30 feet. These are seven foot sages, three foot deer grasses and three rocks. So for a 30 foot, 30 by 15, 450 square foot area, you can fill that with five sages and seven deer grass. Okay, and that's not a hundred dollars or it's maybe a hundred dollars of plants. For, for a large area. If you crowd your sages together, you won't be happy. You'll be happy this year and maybe next year, but after that, it's gonna be like, oh no, I have to take a sage out. Okay, finally, to select plants on the website, go to the resources page. Here is our list of YLP native plant winners. This is the list. If there's a second page to it with some notes that you should read. Look at it carefully. Talk to each other. This is the stuff that works even with deer. This is a list. It's also on the website of the plants at the equestrian center. They're all pretty much working despite the fact that there's deer there. There's deer poop everywhere now at the equestrian center and nothing's getting eaten, I'm shocked. Um, so this is the equestrian center list and Alex's list is also on the website. Okay, don't forget your poppy seeds. <laughs> Here are three sources, please do not buy them from the dollar store. Please do not buy them from the true value. Um, uh, it's very tricky to get California poppy seed that has been properly harvested and not mixed with other things that you'll regret putting into your yard. So these are three sources, the Theodore Payne Foundation, Larner mm -hmm. Seeds, and s, s Seeds. Get them online. Um, I highly recommend it. Order them within the next six weeks, and then as soon as the rains come, start broadcasting them. Um, I wrote here, use the resources on the website and use each other. I will be distributing a membership list, a contacts list, so we can find each other. Um, I'm having a lot of frustration of being able to for us to communicate with one another. So many of us are not on Facebook or next door. Um, and so I'm hoping that you guys will reach each other um, if you'd like to. Um, plants, deer grass, Brandegee's sage, Gracia sage, they're on the list, hummingbird sage. Later, you're going to plant. You're not going to plant now. You're going to plant and mulch and do borders later when it's not hot anymore. But you plan while it's hot. And once more, your steps are... Choose your location, measure your location, select your plants with the research you can do using the website and purchase your plants from Alex or figure out where you're gonna purchase them ASAP when the rains come. Okay, uh, let's see, we're close to the end and let's take, well, 
We have Q and A and we have wrap up. Um, do you, can you guys go five minutes after? Give me a sure. thumbs up visually if you can. Yes. Great. Let's take five more minutes. Um, I'd like to do some Q and A. So you can, um, in the chat box, you can write it or you can um, uh, just raise your hand on the screen. I can see everybody. Um, if you have any questions for now, and I'll give you a minute to think about it. Yes, Preston. So um, that toy and I planted, the dirt looked okay when I planted it, but now that I've watered it, the top has turned to almost concrete. And I keep up the dirt. Up the water. Yes. And I'm wondering if I should dig the whole thing up and actually do some kind of amending because I don't know what was in there from the people who built that thing. No, when you when you dug it, how was it when you were digging down? Could you dig the as it deep? Of, it was kind of sandy. It was kind of sandy. I mean, it looked like my normal soil, sandy and and uh, granite. Uh, you know, is it I, is it hard with clay or because it's the DG? Yeah, yeah maybe it is clay. Maybe it's clay. It's it's very did, it's very hard. How did the how did the drainage? It holds how's the, the drainage? Water. It how's holds the, drainage? the water a long time. Holds the water a long time. It might not be the greatest spot because toys need good drainage. But if you want to leave it, I would mulch it. Okay. Mulch it. Um, mulch it all around there. Um, okay. And do some research. Go to the Las Pelitas website and look under Toyin and see what Bert Wilson says about Toyin's being able to tolerate clay soil. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Other questionis? Okay, uh, I can't see the chat. Is there anything in chat? No? Yes? Could someone read me what's in the chat, please? Can't hear you, Jeannie. From, from Sue Beck, would it be too overwhelming to plant three planting locations? Um, I want to do the top of my driveway, but also in sloped areas in my front and back. That's from Sue. And okay. Then from Okay. Let me let me start with Sue. Sue, you and I should make an appointment for me to come over. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> yes, we you, should. Why don't you email me and let's make a date? Because I meet with everybody in the group one time and like spend way too much time and bore the heck out of you and give you suggestions. Oh, never. I love this. Yes. Thank you. We will communicate. Awesome. Thank you. From and Nancy then, Sutherland to everyone, what is DG? And, oh, uh, DG. DG is decomposing granite. Yes. We have tons of it up here. That's what most of us have to plant in. It just means the granite, when it'll look like a rock, but when you hit it, it just kind of falls apart. Yes. So, and it's what, like, I have it in all my paths. A lot of people use it for paths. It's real sandy. And all it is, it's just granite that has decomposed. So we have a lot of it. That's what it is. Any other questions? From Paula Fuller to everyone, can you reassure me that mulching with wood chips is not a fire hazard? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, particularly if you keep them hydrated. I mean, yes, um, gorilla hair is the best. The shredded is the best, um, but you're fine. You don't want to have it against the house. I mean, you want to, 10 feet from the house, I mean, we don't do this at my house, but, but you should have not organic mulch within 10 feet from the house. And beyond that, have your mulch and um, keep it hydrated. Water it once a week. It's, it's not gonna be the reason the fire takes your house. Keep your plants groomed and like that. I think you're fine with organic mulch, yes. And then from me, the current you were talking about that's dormant now? Yes. Do you water that during the summer at all? That's a great question. I used to. So what happens is if you water it during the summer, these plants during the summer, they'll tend to stay green, but they will also send up water shoots. Like they're not the normal growth. They'll send up these straight shoots that you have to cut back. And um, you can water them once a month in the summer okay. if you need to. Yeah, water them once a month in the summer, I'd say. 
and then Becky is saying, should I cut the flower tops or leave them after they dry? Oh, the sages. So yeah. I leave mine until like January or February. If you're concerned that they're a fire hazard, which at your house, Becky, they're not, you can cut them earlier. But they, they, um, they provide some protection to the leaves when the freezes come. They actually, they help that a little bit. So you can do it now, you can do it then. You will, I think, appreciate having them in the winter when everything's dormant. The architecture of them is pretty, but it's totally your choice. Also, uh, on the white sages at my house, my oldest ones, uh, I leave them uh, until spring because I've got, uh, mine's naturalized now. I get babies all over now, uh, especially mm -hmm. in gravel. Yes, 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 excellent. Okay, thanks. Um, I want to just move here so we can all kind of process this quick. So early in the beginning, you thought about a location at your house. Now, I'd like you to think of that place or another location if you're not happy with your first place. Write down three ideas you have on how to proceed through the steps of measuring, selecting plants, and purchasing plants. In other words, just write down three things you can do when you leave this meeting that are concrete steps. You, I'll give you like 40 seconds. And you can write them in chat or you can write them yourself, but I strongly suggest you write them. Somebody went very dark. Okay, now just take a moment and close your eyes and imagine how that spot might look. Don't worry, we're not like trying to, you know, have it become that. We're just programming our brain to dream about it. Just dream about what that spot might look in the springtime. And finally, dream about how you will feel. Sorry, but I gotta get into emotion. Dream about how you will feel when the plants grow and bloom. Write down three words to describe how you might feel and write them down privately or in chat. Okay, would anyone, are there any in chat that someone could read? I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna get back. Hold on. All right, I'm getting back. So Preston says triumphant. Anyone else wanna share how they might feel? Use your space bar. I think I would feel calm and relieved and very happy to have it be a more hospitable feeling space as it is. Awesome. Anyone else? Uh, Sue, you need to unmute. Just I was just going to say, I'm, I'm going to, I'll, I'll feel amazed because I kill everything. <laughs> No, you don't. <laughs> Maybe I don't love it enough. I think that's the problem. <laughs> no, I think very serene and happy. I, I've got so many ideas in my head that I think would just, you know, just make it a beautiful space for all the animals that walk around and just a happy, a happy place. Awesome. Yeah. Anyone else? I'll feel like I've given back to Mother Earth and uh, maybe, um, to the animals that walk around my driveway up there. Yes. 
That's very much my experience as well, Nancy. You know, we talked about those four priorities, water conservation, fire safety, wildlife habitat, and beauty, and how we all have our priorities there, right? So yeah, that's what I dream of too. I dream of, of the bees buzzing around the flowers. Someone else? Uh, accomplishment. I always, uh, uh, and the, the idea that I have from five to 10 deer a day in my yard and they haven't touched anything. I feel I've, I've really won the war over my deer. <laughs> and it's just a sense of accomplishment in nature. Yes, yes. Awesome. Okay, anyone else? All right. Um, that ends our meeting for tonight, um, except that I always, hold on, where are we? I always like to go back here. And I know that for me, it's a, it's a daily practice to love my yard and not get mad at it, <laughs> not be frustrated by it, and to, to take the time to appreciate it and know how I can change and what I can't change. Um, and next meeting, Monday, September 21st, there may, there may be a class before then, in which case I'd let you know. If you are Facebook folks, please join Native Plants Live Here on Facebook, so maybe we can get some dialogue going in between meetings. Um, and uh, I'm so grateful that you were all here. This is our first Zoom meeting. And I, for one, am feeling triumphant and, um, as Preston said, and accomplished, as Carolyn said. And like, we're all going to give back to nature, as Nancy said. So with that, I guess that's it. Awesome, Leslie. Awesome. Good meeting, Thanks, Leslie. Thank you. Thank you.